An example of an image processing problem is that of image restoration. In this case, the image that we've recorded or measured has been distorted somehow. For example, you might have a nice scene and you record that with a camera, but perhaps the lens isn't quite focused and so the image that you record is slightly blurry. There's other sources of distortion that can be introduced by the imaging system, which in this pictorial example is the camera, and that would be things like atmospheric distortion, motion blur. There's a famous example with the Hubble telescope when it was first launched, the mirrors weren't ground properly. And so the first images that came back had a lot of distortion to them. Well, by measuring the errors in the mirrors, it was possible to recover or restore the images, at least to a large extent, from those improperly ground mirrors. Now, they later sent up another mission to correct the mirrors. But in the meantime, we were able to use some image restoration techniques to recover some of the quality that was lost by the improper grinding. So the basic idea behind image restoration is to reduce the distortion by post-processing the image. Okay, we're trying to correct for the distortion after we've measured the image. We are going to consider a fairly simple case and that is where we model the distortion as the effects of a linear shift invariant system with a point spread function h of m. And if that is our model, then what we observe is the point spread function of the, let's call it blur, convolved with the clean image. If we take a discrete space Fourier transform, we see that this convolution converts to multiplication and we have the observed discrete space Fourier transform as the product of the point spread function and the clean image discrete space Fourier transform. If I know the blur, in other words I know the point spread function of my distortion, then it seems like a fairly simple matter because I can recover f from g by taking what I observe g and dividing it by my known discrete space transform of my point spread function. And then if I do the inverse discrete space Fourier transform, I'll recover my clean image. So simply by undoing the effects of the blur in the frequency domain through division, we can get back the original image. Now there's a challenge here, and that is we have some problems if h becomes zero. Now if you look at our original measurement scenario, we said that what we observed was h times f. So if h is zero at some frequency, then g is also going to be zero at that frequency. And of course, once you multiply by zero, there's no way to uniquely recover what f was there. So any frequencies for which h of u comma v are zero, we're going to have to be careful with. And rather than divide, try and divide by zero, we'll actually do something that's called regularizing the problem by dividing by some small positive number instead of zero. Well, here's an example, and in this panel, we're looking at the model for the blur. So we suppose we have our original image here on the left. We convolve that with some blur point spread function, and that'll give us this blurry image that we observe on the right. So our goal is to observe this image, use our knowledge of the blur to recover the original. Well, in the frequency domain, we have that the original image is multiplied by the discrete space Fourier transform of the blur, which is a, has a low-pass action in this case, because blurring corresponds to removing high-frequency content, or sharp edges. So when I multiply, I end up with a discrete space Fourier transform of my measured image that has significantly less frequency content at higher frequencies than my true underlying image does. And that's because of the fact that this point spread function in the frequency domain is attenuating or suppressing these higher frequency components. So what we're going to do is take the measured discrete space Fourier transform of my blurry image and I'm going to divide it on a frequency by frequency basis. I'm using the MATLAB notation here of a dot divide, 
which means just divide frequency by frequency with the point spread function, discrete space Fourier transform, and that gives me back my hopefully original image discrete space Fourier transform. Now I'm going to call this f hat to allow for the possibility that there might be some differences. And in this case there were certain frequencies where h of u comma v went to zero exactly and so I replaced those by a very very small number 10 to the minus 6 times the maximum value of h u comma v. Well you can see that when I take my inverse discrete space Fourier transform of this equalized or restored image that it looks pretty good. My de-blurred image looks quite similar to the original in terms of the sharpness of the image and the overall quality. So the cautions in applying this approach looks fantastic but there are some caveats and that is we first of all have to know the blurring point spread function. Now if you have access to the imaging system and you can do some tests then you can measure the point spread function. If you don't have access to the types of distortions that are going to occur in the real application, then this becomes more difficult to identify what is my point spread function that's doing the blurry. And of course, if the discrete space Fourier transform of the point spread function is zero, or even very small, we've got a problem because we can't divide by zero, so we have to correct those. And it turns out that if there's noise that gets added to the observation, things get a little bit more tricky. And let's see why that is. So in this case, we're assuming that there's noise present. That is, what I measure is the blurred or distorted version of my desired image, F, and then I've got some added noise that crept in somewhere along the way. Well, when I do my estimate now of the discrete space Fourier transform of my image, by taking my observed discrete space Fourier transform, dividing by the discrete space Fourier transform of the point spread function, then we end up dividing the discrete space Fourier transforms of each of these terms on the right hand side of the equation by h of u comma v. So in this first term everything works out quite nice because this h of u comma v cancels out this one in the numerator and we're left with f, but over here on the right hand side we can see that I've got the noise divided by h of u comma v. So any frequencies at which h of u comma v is very small we're going to be amplifying the noise and that can cause artifacts to occur in our image. I'm going to show an example here continuing what I had done a moment ago in that on the left hand side is my de-blurred image using the same procedure that gave me a very nice result a moment ago but when I've added some very very weak noise and the problem here is that 1 over h of u comma v becomes a very very large number and so it blows up the noise at any frequencies where h is small and you can actually see the noise doesn't appear totally random here but it seems to have some sort of structure periodic structure if you look closely the middle panel is my original image. On the far right, what I did was I tried to regularize this problem a little bit more in that I limited 1 over h of u comma v. Well, I cut it down by a factor of a thousand from the case on the left in that the division here only took place if h of u comma v was a factor of a thousand larger than it was over here for the one on the left and you can see that in this case there's not much noise that creeps in. If you look very closely you might be able to see some evidence of noise but the other thing you notice is that the edges are not quite as sharp. So in the process of limiting 1 over h of u comma v I'm limiting my restoration of the blur itself because in these two terms I no longer have exact cancellation at certain frequencies. But that's the price I pay to keep the noise under control. So in practice there are a number of trade-offs that occur when one does image restoration and it's a fascinating field and this lecture has given you an introduction to it.